All right, it's time for the finale of the class trifecta. Titans, you're up on the couch. Just like the other two classes, there are a few things that Titans could use some help with, in my opinion. And on the other hand, there are a number of things that I think are perfectly fine. So with that in mind, let's jump into the finale of the state of class videos that I'm going to drop. And these are my thoughts on Titans. So let's start with the general gameplay. And I'll just come out immediately and say that in regards to the overall feeling of power and PvE activities, Titans have been eating good for quite some time now, having some of the most powerful abilities and build combinations in the game save for a few outliers that both Warlocks and Hunters had before they were inevitably nerfed. Titans also get access to the setups with trivial ease compared to some of the other two classes. Now that's not to say that it's all sunshine and daisies in Titanland, however, because this power does come with a very big cost for the overall class, and that is more so in the design department, as the Titan class literally feels like it can only do one thing right, and that is melee attacks. And this is probably where my largest criticism of the class comes into play, which is that there seems to be no creativity behind Titans anymore. All the subclasses have the same style of charge attack ability, albeit with some different coloration. Four of the supers that Titans have literally do the exact same thing, and they have different coloring or effects which is where a lot of these, you know, crayon eater memes keep popping up from because Bungie only ever does one thing for Titan. Movement wise, Titans have a number of subclass options that are designed to put you right in the face of your enemies and remain up close and personal during combat. In turn, because some of these options are also melee abilities, Bungie walked a fine line between granting movement through ability usage and the ability to use them and then immediately use a melee attack in combat, which due to some PvP things had to lead to some nerfs. Class ability wise, Titans have a very strong defensive and support option with their barricades. I've seen a number of discussion points around barricades as it pertains to PvP and I'll jump into here for one short little topic and that's just to agree with most other people in saying that the general sentiment that barricades shouldn't do as much damage to players that they're doing right now. And that's really about it for my feedback as it pertains to PvP. I'm not going to focus on that today. Going back to melees, there is one big issue and it seems to be something with the game's netcode. The number of times I have tried to use one of these distance or charge melee attacks only to have the melee attack not connect with the target I'm aiming at or shoot me off in some random direction that I wasn't even looking at leads to some very frustrating occurrences. And this is something that I really hope gets fixed sometime. For today's video, I'm not going to be spending as much time on the elements as I did with the other classes, mainly because there really isn't too much to talk about. Uh, there are a few things and I'll be sure to hit them here. Uh, but there is a much bigger topic that I want to hit towards the end today, so I want to save some more time for that. Let's start with Void and Void Titans. It feels like Void Titan has gone through a few loops since the rework last year with the initial launch having the a reception that it was okay. It wasn't not as exciting of a rework as Void Warlock, but it also didn't feel as bad as a rework that Void Hunter had. What Void Titan brings to the table is some powerful team support play options with Bastion and Offensive Bulwark. Controlled Demolition also remained a option from the Middle Tree Void 2.0 class, which granted quick and easy access to the Volatile keyword. Now Void Titan does have a lot of options for both generating and receiving overshields to themselves and their teammates. And this grants Combat Sustain, which is a great support tool, albeit the fact that it's been kind of uh, outclassed by some of the other reworks. Void, as I've mentioned before, is currently the weakest of the elements as it pertains to their supers. And given the prevalence of new perks like Incandescent and Bolt Shot, a lot of the support options that Void originally 
brought to the table just don't feel as viable as the perk combinations that Solar and Arc now bring to the table. Now, when we're talking specifically about Void Supers, I don't think that Bungie should just straight up be like, okay, so the feedback's to buff Void. Okay, let's buff Sentinel Shield. I think Sentinel Shield's okay, more so because it has a fantasy that it already fulfills. It has a support fantasy, something that it kept from the banner shield days. I think what needs to happen for Void Titans, though, is Bungie should investigate the possibility of a new super that is more damage oriented to actually bring that into line. Outside of the super, I think the only thing Void Titan really needs is either some more options pertaining to team support or the addition of offensive capabilities. A pretty good example, what I mean by this, is the fact that by itself, Void Titans don't have access to the weaken keyword. They actually have to use the grenade weaken uh, fragment, whereas both uh, Warlocks and Hunters do have weaken. Also, this could be the place where you could have an aspect that is focused on the suppression keyword, since there isn't one of those yet. Either way, just something to spice things up a little bit. All right, moving on, let's talk about Solar 3.0 next. Ah, yes, Solar Titan. So remember at the beginning of this video how I said Titans have been eating good in PvE? Yeah, this subclass is the only thing I need to back that up with. The sheer power and survivability of Solar Titan is completely ridiculous in my opinion. Now, I'm not going to be an advocate for nerfs here, but let's just say I'm astonished that the whole bonk setup has been going on for almost four years now. It, is, it has existed since Solar 2.0. Now, sure, a few exotics have been hit over the years due to this one setup, but yet still it seems to be transcendent. It bypasses the realm of nerfs, and it remains a thing. So I guess keep enjoying it. I suppose something's always going to be the top option, and this has been going on for quite some time now, so yeah, there's Really nothing else to say about Solar Titan. It's in a great place. It is incredibly powerful and there's not much that I would even say that it needs or needs something to be done to. All right, Arc 3.0 with Arc Titan. I feel like this subclass kind of followed suit with Void in my opinion that the launch kind of felt okay. It wasn't an amazing thing, but it wasn't also terrible either. While most of my criticism of this class are more oriented towards things that I feel need to be nerfed for the sake of PvP, I'm more focused on the PvE side of the game, so not going to really talk about those criticisms. Arc Titan for a while had one of the most powerful single target damage supers in the game with Thunder Crash and then the Curious of the Falling Stars exotic chess piece. But as time has gone by, other supers have taken this top spot. Now, sticking on the topic of Arc Titan supers, Fist of Havoc, this thing is laughable in PvE. And I really think this one is in the same state as Arc Warlock supers. It needs something to help it. So I would like to see a PvE-focused rework of this super at some point. Uh, but other than that, super-wise, I think we're okay. Now, a powerful ability loop through Heart of Endless Light was a very popular setup last year, until that also got nerfed, alongside a nerf to the grenade build aspect, topic that I'll actually hit in an upcoming video about what I think Destiny needs in the short and long terms. Thankfully, Bungie did decide to break the loop of charge-focused melees by introducing a new non-charge melee option in Thunderclap. Now, a number of targeted buffs towards exotics over the last few seasons have improved this melee a bit, and now oh, there's actually a few styles of play associated with it, so I'd say keep it up there. While Bungie has stated that they aren't bringing back Twilight Garrison, Arc Titan did get a thruster ability to use in place of their barricade to offer more movement capabilities. So, all in all, I think Arc Titan was the only of the three classes to really hit home what Bungie was trying to accomplish with that whole W Arc paradigm, and that's mainly just because the class was already good at doing it in the first place. So cool, I guess you managed to succeed in remaking 
Striker Titan into what Striker Titan already was. All right, Stasis. Like the other two classes, Stasis Titan has really fallen by the wayside in recent seasons due to the sheer power-up provided by the Light 3.0 reworks. Even before then, Stasis Titan had a number of issues plaguing it, and many of these issues are still present today. As I mentioned earlier, the melee attack on this class is probably one of the most inconsistent experiences in the game. The tracking on this thing goes all over the place. Now, sure, you can get a couple of pretty funny moments where you throw someone off the map or something, but other than this, this melee attack doesn't really have much going on for it. Just like the other two classes, I would really like to see something new added to go hand in hand with this, and then maybe some kind of a buff for Shudder or Shiver Strike as well. All right, Glacial Quake, or should I say Fist of Havoc 2.0 with Ice. A lot of the criticisms towards Bungie that I have as it pertains to the Titan class revolves around the fact that they keep trying to make a new version of the same thing. And really, it's getting old. I would really like to see some more creativity here. And at the time when this launched, a lot of people said the same thing. And Bungie never really did anything about it. Right now, using an exotic combo, Behemoth Super is the one super that deals the most raw damage in the game. And I feel like the only thing Bungie's doing is ignoring the fact that it does so much more damage than everything else because it's just due to the bad rap that this class got and Bungie really doesn't want to like nerf it and then have everyone be like, well, this class is complete garbage now. And, you know... I kind of get it, but at the same time, I really want to see something new. So whenever the inevitable stasis rework comes around, a brand new super that is not melee focused needs to be the primary focus of the stasis titan rework. Aspect wise, stasis titan launched with the original stasis shard option and a slide shatter. Slide shatter build had some potency for a while, but it to, like all the other Shatter builds, has fallen off by the wayside. And I still retain my feedback that anything to do with Stasis Shards at this point should just get off of Aspects and move into Fragments. Howl of the Storm and Diamond Lance each offered something new and niche-worthy for Stasis Titan, but it never really felt strong. And I feel like this more so comes back to the other portions of my Stasis Titan feedback. The reason you don't really see a lot of things going on with these two aspects is because, well, not a lot of people are really using Stasis Titan to begin with because the overall class is pretty weak. So I would really like to see some general Stasis buffs happen before anything else happens to these aspects. All right, a quick note on exotics. Uh, the feedback is identical to Hunters, if for just one change, where Hunters had far too many exotics that were focused on dodge that bled into each other's play space. Titans, on the other hand, have far too many exotics focused on melee that bleed into their same space. Now, while a number of changes have been made in recent seasons to focus in on individual abilities, a number of old exotics, for a good example here, let's use Syntheseps and Worm God Crests, they have nearly identical functionality. And then there is the shared feedback for all the classes on exotics that are highly situational in nature. I really want to see a lot less of these exotics moving forward. The problem in general, and I mentioned this in a couple of the other videos, is that the activation criteria is either too specific or the benefit that you get when you finally do get this specific uh, playstyle to activate is just meaningless compared to one of the neutral game exotics that provide substantial benefits to your class and are much easier to access. That's why things such as Heart of Inmost Light were so potent and widely used because of the ease of access. Given the potency of so much that Titan has, especially with Solar and in some degrees Arc, I think the feedback regarding exotic armor pieces for Titan is a little less critical to the health of the overall class, but there is one area that Titan in particular needs a lot of help with, and I'm going to wrap up today with a quick discussion on it with my criticism of the Titan class. Titans have had a 
serious issue with design creativity in Destiny 2. All three original subclasses had a nearly identical function to them. Stasis and Strand came along, and guess what? They only highlighted this to an even further degree. Both of those elements had the exact same route for supers, the exact same route for charge focus melees, and even to another degree, the aspects. A lot of them are only melee focused tools. The entire class seems to be built around the idea of pushing your melee button over and over again. And after a while, it gets stale, it gets old. And, you know, given the recent changes to the gameplay, all these new higher difficulty things, close quarter combat has never been more dangerous in the end game. So a lot of these tools are either far too weak or just pointless to use. Let's go back in time. I'm sure some folks can remember way back to when the Taken King was originally coming out and Bungie started to publish some Vidocs. And let's talk specifically about the Vidoc where Sunbreaker was originally revealed. That was the last time I actually felt excited about a new Titan Super. Now, Burning Maul may be a little bit here too, but it's the last time it really felt like something unique was coming to the Titan class. Since that point in time, it's literally been all the same. So many melee focused supers, so many melee focused abilities, and it just gets old. Hell, you can just look at some of the concept work for Strand Titan. The original plan was to have a flamethrower-esque super. This would have been so much more exciting than yet another iteration of Fist of Havoc. Really, the big takeaway here is I feel like the creativity of the Titan class is just lost upon whoever is in charge of approving the final abilities for the class. It just sounds like whoever this person or these people are, they've just bought so much into this crayon eater meme that they just can't get off of it. It To me, it sounds like you have these designers who go to these higher ups. They go to them, these designers or like the higher ups and say, check out these cool new super ideas. They have this big concept art, flamethrower, looks great. And then the higher up responds with, that's cool, but how about Fist of Havoc with ice? Yeah, that's, that's honestly how I feel like it goes for Titan anymore. Beyond this, and to highlight something that I'm going to discuss a bit on one of my upcoming videos, the real other big feedback issue that I have to highlight here for all of the classes, it is just seems like it takes so long for any meaningful changes to ever get done to a class or a subclass in general. This has been something that many players have talked about for a long time, ever since the reveal of Stasis Titan. Well, it's just Fist of Hack with Ice, please give us something new. And yet the only thing we ever hear is the team is taking it into consideration or we are looking at the feedback and then year and a half goes by, they reveal Strand Titan. Oh, look, it's the same thing. <laughs> feedback that lacks action, especially for the duration that the feedback has been given. And time just seems to pass by so much time. It's been two, almost three years now. And it really drives a lot of the negative player sentiment in the game. And it's not just classes, like a lot of the game. Now let's go back to year one of Destiny 2, double primaries. This is something that a lot of people, including myself, saw as a massive flaw in the game. All this feedback was given, and it still took Bungie over a year to fix the problem. Same thing with sunsetting. Same thing with content vaulting. The fact is, it just takes far too long to get any meaningful changes actually done. And this is really what I feel like the problem is with a lot of what's going on with the game, especially with the Titan subclasses as it pertains. Now, this could be for any number of reasons, but all in all, the creativity of Titans, or should I say the lack of creativity for Titans, has only been getting worse since the 2.0 reworks. I sincerely hope that whatever we get for the last element in the final shape, 
it's got to do something big. It's got to shake things up. Like we cannot have Fist of Havoc 4.0 at this point. It, it has to be something new. So that's going to do it for the last of my thoughts on class videos. Overall, I think the class as a whole is in a fairly good position right now with most of the negatives also being shared with the other classes in the form of a dire need for stasis 3.0 or, you know, additional exotic changes to pull apart some of the exotics that have nearly identical functions. The bigger issue for Titan lies in the similarity of the class that it's been so associated with at this point. There's just far too much focus on melees that all the subclasses effectively feel the same because they're all focused on that one style of gameplay. I think Bungie really needs to take a big step back and pull the overall class away from just melee only. Now, sure, retain some of it because, you know, it still has some viability in the game. Like, hell, let's talk about Bonk Bill. It, it's great. The feedback here is don't just make it the only focus of the class. Like, there needs to be some more diversity to what the class actually brings to the table. Bungie, you do that, and I think things will only get better for Titans in the end. So... That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. And like always, be sure to share your own thoughts about Titans here. Have a good one and I'll catch you in the next video.